Hey, back. It is time for some more Dante's Inferno. Let's just dive on in. We're picking up at Canto 3. So if you missed out, you know, go check out the last one. Through me, the way is to the city dolent. Through me, the way is to eternal dole. Through me, the way among the people lost. Justice incited by my sublime creator. Created me divine omnipotence, the highest wisdom and the primal love. Before me, there were no created things, only eternal and I eternal last. All hope abandon ye who enter in. These words in somber color I beheld written upon the summit of a gate, wherein I, their sense is master, hard to me, and he to me as one experienced. Here all suspicion needs must be abandoned. All cowardice must needs be here extinct. We to the place have come where I have told thee thou shalt behold the people dolorous, who have forgone the good of intellect. And after he had laid his hand on mine with joyful mind, whence I was comforted, he led me in among the secret things, their sighs, complaints, and ulations loud resounded through the air without a star whence i at the beginning wept thereat languages diverse horrible dialects accents of anger words of agony and voices high and hoarse with sound of hands made up a tumult that goes whirling on forever in the air forever black even as the sand doth, when the whirlwind breathes, and I, who had my head with horror bound, said, Master, what is this which now I hear? What folk is this which seems by pain so vanquished? And he to me, this miserable mode, maintained the melancholy souls of those who lived without an infamy of praise. Commingled are they with the caitiff choir of angels who have not rebellious been, nor faithful were to God, but were for self. The heavens expelled them, not to be less fair, nor them the nevermore abyss receives, for glory none the damned would have for the, from them. And I, O oh Master, what so grievous is to these that maketh them lament so sore? He answered, I will tell thee very briefly. These have no longer any hope of death, and this blind life of theirs is so debased. They envious are of every other fate. No fame of them the world permits to be. Misery, cord, and justice both disdain them. Let us not speak of them, but look and pass. And I, who looked again, beheld a banner, which rolling round ran on so rapidly that of all pause it seemed to me indignant. And after it there came so long a train of people that I ne'er would have believed that even death so many had undone. When some among them I had recognized, I looked and beheld the shade of him who made through cowardice the great refusal. Forthwith I comprehended and was certain that this, the sect, was of the caitiff wretches, hateful to God and to his enemies. These miscreants who never were alive were naked and were stung exceedingly by gadflies and by hornets that were there. These did their faces irrigate with blood, which with their tears commingled 
at their feet by the disgusting worms was gathered up. And when to gazing further, I, I betook me. People I saw on a great river's bank, whence said I, Master, now vouchsafe to me that I may know who these are and what law makes them appear so ready to pass over, as I discern Athworth the dusky light, and he to me. These things shall all be known to thee as soon as we our footsteps stay upon the dismal shore of Acheron. When, then with mine eyes ashamed and downward cast, fearing my words might irksome be to him, from speech refrained I till we reached the river, and lo, towards us coming in a boat, an old man, hoary with the hair of eld, crying, Woe unto you, ye souls depraved! Hope never more to look upon the heavens. I come to lead you to the other shore, to the eternal shades and heat and frost. And thou, that yonder standest living soul, withdraw thee from these people who are dead. But when he saw that I did not withdraw, he said, but other ways by other ports, thou to the shore shall come, not here for passage, a lighter vessel needs must carry thee. And unto him the guide, vex thee not, Charon. It is so willed that where is power to do that which is willed, and farther question not. There at were quieted the fleecy cheeks of him, the ferryman of the livid fin, who round about his eyes had wheels of flame. But all those souls who were weary and naked, their color changed and gnashed their teeth together as soon as they had heard those cruel words. God, they blasphemed and their progenitors, the human race, the place, the time, the seed of their engineering and of their birth. Thereafter, all together, they drew back, bitterly weeping to the accursed shore, which waiteth every man who fears not God, Charon the demon with the eyes of Geld, beckoning to them, collects them all together, beats with his oar whoever lags behind, and in the autumn time the leaves fall off, first one and then another, till the branch unto the earth su surrenders all its spoils. In similar wise, the evil seed of Adam throw themselves from that margin one by one at signals as a bird unto its lure. So they depart across the dusky wave and ere upon the other side they land. Again on this side, a new troop assembles. My son, the courteous master said to me, all those who perish in the wrath of God here meet together out of every land and ready are they to pass over the river because celestial justice spurs them on so that their fear is turned into desire. This way there never passes a good soul and hence if Charon doth complain of thee, well mayest thou know how now what his speech imports. This being finished, all the dust campaign trembled so violently that of that terror, the recollection bathes me still with sweet sweat. The land of tears gave forth a blast of wind and the fulminated a vermilion light, which overmastered in me every sense, and as a man whom sleep hath seized, I fell. Canto four. Broke the deep lethargy within my head, a heavy thunder, so that I upstarted, like to a person who is who by force is awakened. And round about I move my rested eyes. Uprisen, erect, and steadfastly I gazed, to recognize the place wherein I was. True is it that upon the verge I found me, 
of the abysmal valley dolorous that gathers thunder of infinite ululations, obscure, profound it was, and nebulous, so that by fixing on its depths my sight, nothing, whatever I discern therein. Let us descend now into the blind world, began the poet, pallid, utterly. I will be first, and thou shalt be second. And I, who of his color was aware, said, How shall I come if thou art afraid, who art wont to be a comfort to my fears? And he to me, the anguish of the people who are below here in my face depicts that pity which for terror thou hast taken. Let us go on, for the long way impales us. Thus he went in, and thus he made me enter, the foremost circle that surrounds the abyss. There, as it seemed to me from listening, where lamentations none, but only sighs, that tremble made the everlasting air, and that arose from sorrow without torment, which the crowds had, that many were and great of infants, of infants and women and of men, to me the master good thou dost not ask what spirits these which thou beholdest are now will i have thee know ere thou go further and they send not and if they merit had tis not enough because they had no baptism which is the portal of the faith thou holdest and if they were before christianity in the right manner they adored not god and among the such as these am I myself, for such defects and not for other guilt, lost are we and are only so far punished, that without hope we live on in desire. Great grief seized on my heart when I heard, because some people of much worthiness I knew who in that limbo were suspended. Tell me, my master, tell me, thou my lord, began I with desire of being certain of that faith which overcometh every error. Came any one by his own merit hence, or by another's who was blessed thereafter? And he who understood my cov covert speech replied, I was a novice in this state when I saw hither come a mighty one, with sign of victory in cornet. Hence he drew forth the shade of the first, and that of his son Abel, and of Noah, of Moses the lawgiver, and the obedient, Abraham, patriarch, and David, king, Israel with his father and his children, and Rachel, for whose sake he did so much, and others many, and he made them blessed. And thou must know, that earlier than these never were any human spirits saved. We ceased not to advance because he spake, but still were passing onward through the forest. The forest, say I, of thick, crowded ghosts, not very far as yet our way had gone this side the summit, when I saw a fire that overcame a hemisphere of darkness. We were a little distant from it still, but not so far that I in part discerned not that honorable people held that place. O thou who honorest every art and science, who may these be, which such great honor have, that from the fashion of the rest it parts them, and he to me, the honorable name that sounds of them above there in thy life, wins grace in heaven that so advances them. All honor be to the preeminent poet. His shade returns again that was departed. After the voice had ceased and quiet was, four mighty shades I saw approaching us. Semblance had they not, nor sorrowful or nor glad to say to me, begin my gracious master. Him with that Falcon, falchion in his hand, behold, who comes before the three, even as their lord, that one is Homer, poet sovereign. He who comes next is Horus, the satirist. The third is Ovid, 
and the last is Lucan. Because of each of these with me applies the name that solitary voice proclaimed. They do me honor and in that do well. Thus I beheld assembled the fair school of that Lord of the song preeminent, who o'er the others like an eagle soar. When they together had discoursed somewhat, they turned to me with signs of salutation, and on beholding this my master smiled. And more of honor still, much more they did me, and that they made me one of their own band, so that the sixth was I, mid so much wit. Thus we went on as far as to the light, things saying, tis becoming to keep silent, as was the saying of them where I was. We came to a noble's castle foot, seven times encompassed with lofty walls, defended round by a fair rivulet. This we passed over even as firm ground. Through portals seven I entered with bees. We came into a meadow of fresh verdure. People were there with solemn eyes and slow of great authority in their countenance. They spake but seldom and with gentle voices, thus we withdrew ourselves upon one side. Into an opening, luminous and lofty, so that they all of them were visible, there opposite upon the green enamel, were pointed out to me the mighty spirits whom I have seen, I feel myself exalted. I saw Electra with compassions many, amongst whom I knew both Hector and Aeneas, Caesar in armor with gerfalcon eyes. I saw Camilla and Penthesilla on the other side and, and saw the king Latinus, who with Lavinia, his daughter, sat. I saw that Brutus who drove Tarkin forth, Lucreta, Julia, Marsa, and Cornelia, and saw alone apart the Saladin. When I had lifted up my brows a little, the master I beheld for those who knew, sit with his philosophic family. All gaze upon him and all do him honor. There I beheld both Socrates and Plato, who near him before the other stand. Democritus, who put the world on chance, Diogenes, Anna Exergros, Thales, Zeno, Empedocles, Heraclitus. Of qualities I saw the good collector, Height, Dioscortes, Orpheus saw I, Truly, Tully, and Livy, and Mor Moral, Seneca, Euclid, Geometrician, and Ptolemy, Galen, Hippocrates, and Avincia, Averroes, who the great comment made, I cannot all of them portray in full, because so drives me onward the long theme, that many times the world comes short of fact, the sixfold company in two divides, another way my sapient guide conducts me, forth from the quiet of the air that trembles to a place I come where nothing shines. <sighs> okay, well, that was two. Uh, we're going to stop there just because I'm trying to keep these around 20 minutes. And apparently it takes me a little time to read just one canto. So hopefully we're able to get most of these done before the end of the month. But I hope you enjoyed and like, subscribe, ring the bell, all the things, make suggestions in the comments, let me know what you thought, and I apologize for messing up some of those name pronunciations. I am not very good at pronouncing names, especially names I've never heard or seen before. <laughs> um, but uh, feel free to support me on my Patreon, you know, check descriptions, and there's things to click to re see the rest of the videos so far on the playlist and 
Howl at the moon. Bye.